Number 10. Lunar Lunar started all the way back with the Silver Star on the Sega CD in 1992. It enjoyed several remakes on the PS1, GBA and PSP. Its sequel released two years later only got one remake on the PS1. As the 90s ended and the new century came about, Lunar got much more competition than what it did at the beginning from one of the very first traditional style JRPGs released before some of the 90s giants to a forgotten gem a decade later. I think this charming series died off because first, its sequel didn't get the same treatment as its predecessor, two, because Game Arts, the developers, was mainly managed by the Miyagi brothers. Takeshi Miyagi sadly passed away in 2011. Finally, Game Arts developed and published what the consensus, including me, considers as one of the worst JRPGs of all time, Lunar Dragon Song, also known as Lunar Genesis in Europe, on the Nintendo DS. There's a lot of history to this company and this little series out there, but the point is, Lunar was doomed to fail from the moment they decided to release its games on an add-on for the Genesis, and not a real console per se. It can definitely be revived today, no problem, considering the huge amount of fans it's gathered over the past several years. Number 9. Batten Kaitos Only two games were released, so I'm not sure if it counts as a series, but it was planned to be one. Both went through development issues and post-production nightmares, especially Origins released in 2006, which was planned to be released for the Wii back then. I don't think Namco did a good job advertising these two, but we can't exactly blame them. Why? Because they wanted to support the GameCube, a console most JRPG developers didn't want to release their games for. So, just like Lunar, Batten Kaitos 1 and 2 may have been released on the wrong console, but there was no way to know the genre will fail on it. Besides, unlike what Game Arts did with Lunar, Namco never bothered remastering or even porting these games to more successful consoles. Successful in terms of JRPGs, of course. Can these card-based, turn-based RPGs ever come back with at least a remaster? Maybe, but that doesn't mean the series is revived. Until Namco allows a third main game in the series, it'll remain dead forever, sadly. Number 8. Ark the Lath This is one of the most historically important strategy RPG series of all time. Nowadays it's severely underrated because ever since its first release in 1996, Sony never bothered bringing it over. Working Designs had to do the world a favor by releasing a collection of the first three games and their spin-off, but it was back in 2002, when the PS1 was already dying. It was also one of Working Design's last localizations with barely any marketing done for it. So yeah, Ark the Lad went through some really pathetic history. On the other hand though, you could say the series isn't 100% dead, as they released a crossover spin-off in 2018. However, uh, yeah, you guessed it, it was a gacha free-to-play mobile game. It took three years for it to be released in the West, only for its servers to shut down a few months later. Even though most of the original creators of the series worked on it, I hope they learned their lesson in knowing this is not what true fans wanted. To me, it died off with a horrible action RPG on the PS2 called End of Darkness. Obviously a commercial and critical failure, its predecessor, Twilight of the Spirits, was also on PS2, and it was one of the best in the series. So a dumbass change from strategy to action, and then a mobile game over a decade later, it was bound to die. But it is the fact that they made that mobile game what makes me think the series still has a future. It just depends on Sony allowing its developers to work on a normal RPG for modern consoles. Number 7. Grandia Grandia was released on the Sega Saturn in 1997 only in Japan. Both Sony and Gonho, its publishers worldwide, immediately saw the Saturn having been successful overseas, so they made a good call porting the game to the PS1, the place where the series met its success. However, the sequel was released on the Dreamcast, 
Once again, they went through the exact same situation, deja vu. So granted, 2 on PS2 didn't run very well, but at least it got more people to the series. You probably already know the rest. Grandia 3, published by Square Enix this time, was actually successful, but divided the fanbase, unfortunately. We're talking about a series also created by Game Arts, so I already told you one of its key members died in 2011. We wouldn't see anything whatsoever until the remasters of the first two games for the Nintendo Switch and Steam a few years ago. Yes sir, they sold fairly well, which makes me think that maybe, just maybe, there's still hope for Grandia. We can't conclude, however, that just because old games from Death series are remastered, a brand new mainline game will be released soon. But seeing how this is a franchise with tons of fans out there, and seeing how the remasters brought a lot of attention back to it, I still see it as a big possibility. Number 6. Breath of Fire Well, this is Capcom we're talking about. But hey, didn't they announce a Mega Man Battle Network collection recently? Yet another completely dead series they abandoned a long time ago? I know, I know, it's Mega Man, it's more famous than Breath of Fire. But this is a role-playing series that did enjoy great success in the 90s and early 2000s with four games. That is, until they went bonkers with a weird-ass experiment on the PS2 called Dragon Quarter that most fans and critics didn't like. As if that wasn't enough, Capcom also went the mobile way, with a horrendous release that made the Art the Lad Gacha game look like a masterpiece. Worst of it all, the game was officially titled as Breath of Fire 6, with pathetic advertisement everywhere. You're thinking it was a massive failure, right? Yes, it was, but we can't pretend it's not the main reason why Capcom threw the towel. If they're smart enough, they'll try to bring back some of the original developers to work on a brand new title for modern systems. I can guarantee it will enjoy way more success than all of the previous JRPGs in this list. Bread of Fire was freaking mainstream, for Christ's sake! But anyway... Just keep it turn-based, Capcom. No more lame-ass mobile action RPGs. Number 5. Wild Arms I'm very nostalgic for Wild Arms. It was a long-running series by Media Vision, but published by Sony. Yep, you know what that means and why it died. Basically, each title sold less and less after the success of the very first game on the PS1 and its million copies sold worldwide. Not a single release after that came even close, so after five main titles and a few spin-offs, Sony gave up. Media Vision then started working on Valkyria Chronicles. Wild Arms 5 is my favorite of them all, released on the PS1 at the end of 2006 in Japan, but it carried over a battle system placed on hexes. I love that combat, but some fans just didn't. The same hexagonal features were seen last in a spin-off called Wild Arms Crossfire on the PSP in 2007. Its reception was very mixed and, well, I bet most of you didn't even know it existed. Exceed Games published it, just like the last two main titles, and they were relatively small back then, with not a lot of money for advertisement, after some research, I came to realize most people only know the first three games in the series. It even tried to come back with a mobile spin-off in 2018, a crossover, but yeah, one more goddamn gacha game. Servers shut down early 2020. Can't these companies see that no one wants classic JRPG series return in the form of mobile bullshit? Well, I hope all these failures open their eyes and come back to the console market with a traditional JRPG that fans really want. Wild Arms still has potential, there's a huge fanbase out there. Number 4. Shadow Hearts Let me tell you why Shadow Hearts is far different from most of the series we've seen so far. Nonetheless, it shares similarities with one, Baten Kaitos. It started off with a bizarre experiment on the PS1 called Kurelka, an attempt to mix survival horror with turn-based and grid-based movement and tank controls, and yeah, it was a failure. Great ideas, unique concept for sure, but it was totally wasted potential. 
Well, developer Sagnoth didn't give up and said, let's make a traditional style RPG with a twist in combat and smaller horror elements, shall we? Shadow Hearts and its Judgment Ring system on the PS2 were born, one of the best JRPGs in 2001. But it was a commercial failure and Final Fantasy X, released at the same time, destroyed it. The series enjoyed some small success with the sequel Covenant in 2004. Once again, though, other major JRPGs crushed it. Through this, Shadow Hearts was never successful, which is exactly the reason why I don't think it'll ever come back. Being proved wrong, however, would make me extremely happy. Number 3. Dot Hack Fans have been begging Bandai goddamn Namco for a remaster of the first saga. Four episodes released on the PS2 in the course of a year, from 2002 until 2003. The series was a massive success worldwide, even though it never really felt like it. Well, perhaps massive is an overstatement then, but the first two games sold millions of copies. Anyway, the success spawned one of my favorite action RPGs of all time a few years later, Dot Hack GU, now released in three volumes. After that, a fighting game on the PS3 that stayed in Japan. Yeah. It's good though, but um, where's the next saga? Listen, Dot Hack was a very popular and well established media franchise with even several anime series and mangas. But all of a sudden, and for no revealed reason so far, it just disappeared. Namco stopped caring for it and even began supporting its direct competition, Sword Art Online. Dot Hack GU was remastered in 2017 on the PS4 and in 2022 on the Switch. I think at least the PS4 version sold fairly well, maybe enough to tell the company that there's still some interest out there, enough to remaster the first saga, maybe enough to develop a brand new one, maybe not cause Cyber Connect 2, the developers don't work for good old Namco anymore. But eh, I still would like to see what Namco themselves come up with if they ever decide to listen to Dot .hack fans. Number 2. Grow Lancer Here's my problem with Grow Lancer, it's one of my favorite JRPG series of all time, but it's also very obscure in the West. Never mainstream, not even once. Irreconcilable differences between the creators of Lang Reaser and Masaya games led to the creation of CareerSoft, a team who developed Grow Lancer as a spiritual successor to Lang Reaser under the command of Atlus. The first game released on the PS1 in 1999 stayed in Japan, its PSP remaster several years later also stayed in Japan. Working Designs had to bother one last time to localize its two sequels on the PS2, obviously as a commercial failure. The company went bankrupt after this. The fourth game stayed in Japan on the PS2, but for some reason Atlus decided to strongly support its PSP port and publish it themselves to the West. It met positive reviews and some success. Heritage of War, my favorite of the bunch, didn't meet the same fate. Mixed reviews and barely any commercial celebration. Atlus didn't even bother with the sixth and final game. My point is, it just never seemed like Atlus had any interest in bringing the series over and truly supporting it. Sure, back then it didn't have successful branches in the West to advertise something like this. Hell, it didn't even have a European branch. Nowadays, thanks to the internet and dumbass fanboys like me, the series is slightly more popular, right? Maybe if at least a remaster could happen or the first game or anything at all, it needs a revival, there's a lot of potential here. Lang Reaser 1 and 2 were remastered recently, Atlus, at least give us that. Number 1. The Chrono Series 
Chrono Cross was remastered earlier this year, but it didn't meet the overly delicate and exigent demands of some folks. Either way, remastering old stuff is good and all, but it is not a revival of a series like I said at the beginning. Why will Squaresoft let their second most popular and successful series die escapes me entirely. Trigger is considered as one of the most influential video games ever created with millions of fans worldwide. Almost the same can be said about Chrono Cross. So Trigger got some ports that were mostly successful while Cross stayed abandoned for over two decades until recently. Well, unfortunately I'm not hopeful for anything because its remaster didn't get a fantastic reception, which means Square has economically decided that a revival is fruitless. I really hope not. The Chrono series is a gold mine, but Square Enix has its fan base divided. Half of it composed of old school fans who love traditional style turn based RPGs, and the other uncaring half who only wants hack and slash or souls like games. If you were Square Enix, what exactly would you do with this series? It's by far the most popular of the entire list, and there was never a real understandable reason for it to die. But really, if you were them, will you bring it back? And if so, then how? You're probably wondering why I didn't include Valkyrie Profile and Suikoden. Well, isn't Valkyrie coming back soon with this new release? It's not what fans want, but at least it's a revival, right? And isn't Suikoden coming back next year under a different name? A Yuden Chronicle, baby! Same devs, just not Konami, thankfully. Couldn't have picked better honorable mentions than them. After all, they were originally my numbers 1 and 2 for this video. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching.